Well, welcome everyone to WordCamp Hamilton 2018. <clears throat> um, I'm Brian Hogg, for those that don't know me, and uh, this talk will be on submitting, maintaining, and uh, growing a plugin on WordPress.org. There we go. So definitely encouraged to ask questions. Uh, it's first first talk of the morning, so I may forget what I said 10 minutes ago. So definitely if you have a question <laughs> as I'm going along, uh, much better I think to, it, my answer might be, hey, I'm gonna get to that in two slides, <laughs> but at least if it's fresh on your brain, uh, ask a question and then uh, we'll try and answer it when we are going along. So I've got um, a few plugins, a couple on, the, or three, I believe now, on the WordPress.org, um, some courses as well, teaching people right now on development and uh, launching and, and growing uh, plugins, both free and paid. I've got a whole blog thing there, and um, I used to organize this conference, and so this is really neat to be coming and speaking at the conference and uh, just showing up, and everything's already done, so yay. <laughs> so I'd love to know who you guys are, so uh, just kind of quick show of hands, like who's created a plugin even, but not necessarily release it, but just created a plugin, even a small one for a client project? And it could just be like a couple lines of code or whatever, perfect. And then who right now has a plugin release on WordPress.org already? So a handful. Cool, good, sweet. So for those who haven't created a plugin, I'm not gonna be going through like how to code a plugin during this, but hopefully the um, you'll still be able to take away and have things in the back of your mind when you're like coding some for a client, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, what would be involved in actually putting this out there for everyone to use and not just the client who I'm creating it for? Um, and yeah, so uh, we'll go from there. So a quick uh, story of kind of the first plugin that I created and released myself on WordPress.org. Um, was actually right here in Hamilton at the Winking Judge. Um, it's a little hard to see. It's kind of a, kind of a dark, dingy upstairs up there. But um, essentially, uh, the plugin was for uh, sending, helping to send newsletters. So softwarehamilton.com was kind of promoting, you know, doing a really good job promoting events here in Hamilton. And uh, but sometimes the dates would be wrong. And like they they put, kind of put that our event was happening Wednesday at 2 p.m. instead of Saturday 2 p.m. or something like that. And we're like, oh, are you doing this manually? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe we can code something up quick to do it. So uh, an hour or two with a beer or two in that chair, uh, I coded uh, the first version of that plugin uh, just for their specific calendar that they were using, which actually doesn't even exist anymore. Um, and apparently this is kind of, and we got it working and, and uh, we're able to use it uh, pretty quickly after. But apparently this is kind of a startup hub because on this couch, uh, three people uh, built an app uh, and, and got it working uh, while people drunkenly threw darts above their head. <laughs> so that's like extreme programming to like a next level. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we totally got it working and uh, you know, I waited to publicly release it until I sobered up because you shouldn't drink and launch. So that's kind of an important thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely had some hurdles to think about uh, as I kind of went through and releasing it and maintaining it. So that's what I'm gonna be going through today. So the first thing is obviously to get the plugin ready to submit. And the very first thing you need to do is that you don't need to have in there to have a working plugin is adding a readme.txt file, which is uh, literally a readme.txt file that you put uh, inside your plugin folder. So this is an example, obviously hard to read, but I'll go through what's uh, in it, but it's literally a plain text file and on wordpress.org, you can just Google like wordpress readme.txt example and find it but it contains things like a short and long description. So when you're actually searching for a plugin, when you go to plugins add new and you type in a plugin name, there's kind of that short description. So that's what you put in there. The long description, so if you click on like more info, it can be literally as long as you want. I think it put right in the description, infinite length. Um, so some people use that as a very, very long uh, description there. You can have tags or keywords. I don't know if you remember back in the day, like the meta keywords for like a, a website, which aren't really looked at anymore. You can totally add that in there as well. Uh, you can add in any installation notes. Most often it's just go to plugins add new, click activate, <laughs> install. Or if people actually download the zip, right? Upload the zip. But if you have any special installation notes in there, uh, you can put that in that section. You can have frequently asked questions, which in the new design actually looks quite good. So you can have a question and then an answer and it's like the accordion style. So you click on it and it'll like expand. And so you can put any, uh, you know, kind of frequently asked questions for your plugin in there. People can see it. Uh, reference the screenshots, which I'll go through in a bit, 
but basically a description of any screenshots you add uh, to your plugin. And then the license, um, which I'll go through a bit as well. But basically that it needs to be a GPL, uh, but you specify exactly which license you have in there. And the change log. So anytime you make a change, you can also put in the readme.txt file description of what you changed, uh, which you know everyone reads <laughs> before clicking update now. Uh, but if they do, uh, and they click on it, they can actually see exactly what uh, you changed and whether they should upgrade or not. So some tips on this. Do not spam the tags. <laughs> so it may be tempting that you're like, whoa, well, these 500 keywords are totally irrelevant to my plugin. Don't do it. Um, you're limited to about 12 before they start to kind of flag you. Um, and they can either deny uh, your being in the repo at all or take you out if you like add it later. So yeah, definitely really don't need more than 12 uh, plugins at all. And you can kind of look at, and, and they basically think that you're trying to game the system if, uh, if you have more than that. Um, look at other plugin readme files, right? So you can go search for a plugin, download it, uh, grab the zip file, open up the readme.txt file and just see what that format is and even copy and paste it and use it as kind of a base for years. Um, so that gives you some ideas of uh, some other sections I might not have mentioned and what tags and stuff that they're using if it's a similar plugin to yours. Uh, validate the, the file before you submit. So there's this uh, kind of wordpress.org plugin validator. So you can either put in the location of your readme or just copy and paste it into that box, hit validate, and it'll tell you if there's any errors. Um, so just make sure that, uh, that you do that first. So, you know, WordPress.org, it's, it's free, free to use. It's free for anyone to, to have a plugin hosted there. But uh, because of that, you know, it's not something you own, and there are obviously rules they need to follow uh, if you're going to have a plugin uh, listed in there. So here's some of them. So as I alluded to, your plugin uh, needs to be 100% uh, GPL compatible. So there are other licenses that uh, GPL, you know, they're still GPL compatible and are still, you know, open source uh, enough, you know, and have no, you know, have, don't have any restrictions that would prevent it from being GPL. Um, but this doesn't just include, you know, the PHP code of your plugin. It also includes like any images, any CSS, any JavaScript libraries that you're adding, uh, that you're including within your plugin, all have to be uh, GPL compatible. Um, and this isn't necessarily the case if you're using or creating a plugin for your client. So, you know, if, if you are creating one, you have a choice between a couple libraries and you think this might be a plugin that you want to release later, definitely uh, consider what license uh, that library has and, and uh, make sure that it's one that is GPL compatible. So no tracking without explicit consent. So you can't like add any kind of tracking code. And this could be something simple like um, having an image that is being pulled from your website. Right? So then you can tell where that image is being pulled from and you can see what uh, other sites are using your plugin. You think, oh, that's kind of public information, whatever, but no. You can't have any of that, uh, any kind of tracking at all, and you really shouldn't be pulling stuff from your own website inside your plugin or any uh, external uh, spot if you can, because then that creates a, a, a potential for your plugin to break that site if that other site goes down. But essentially, you can track stuff. And there are plugins um, like Wisdom plugin, uh, Freemius Insights is another plugin slash service that you can use to like track like what version of WordPress are they using? What's the URL of the site? Like um, uh, what PHP version are they using? You can track all that, but you have to ask them. And they have to explicitly say, yep, and then uh, consent to it that way. Uh, so no credits. So similar to the tracking, you can't have anything show up on the front end of the site that says like powered by and then your plugin name um, without again them approving it. You can though have links within uh, the back end of the site like on your settings page and stuff that say like hey this is created by me like check go here for more info or for tips or something. You can totally do that on the back end of the site just can't do it on the on the front end without asking them first. So no nags or non-dismissible alerts. I don't know if you've seen plugins like this where they just create a nag at the top and you can't get rid of it and um, there's no way to click it away. So you can have alerts and it's kind of nice where like after maybe they use your plugin for a while, you can ask them to leave a review or something, but it has to be, you know, not super annoying <laughs> and uh, consistent and it has to be something they can just hit X or dismiss and get rid of quickly. Um, so you can't have it where they can't get rid of it at all. <laughs> Nothing illegal. 
this kind of goes without saying, but yeah, I really did consider having a, you know, a Bitcoin mining plugin that, you know, you just have out there for like a month or two on a bunch of sites and then it would like scoop it all and then I just take it away in a future update and it'd be fine. But no, you can't do that. So yeah, I mean, even after all these rules and obviously not doing anything illegal, they still have the right to, you know, take your plugin down for any reason. But remember that these are volunteers. They're very nice people. <laughs> they, they aren't out there to like make enemies and take plugins down at random. Um, you know, it's, it's public when that happens, right? Um, so if it was done for no reason, people would complain. Um, but, you know, just realize that this is something that you, you know, don't own and that there is a potential uh, for, for the plugin to be taken down uh, at any time. So, so now uh, you've kind of followed the rules and you've thought of, uh, got your readme file ready. So now how do you actually release the plugin? So there's some specific steps and we'll, we'll go through that. So you, again, ensure that your readme.txt file is present and uh, validated, so it's not, uh, there's no errors in it. Uh, you basically, you know, you right click in, in either Windows or Mac and create a zip file. If you have uh, the Git folder, or I don't know if there are some old uh, developers in there, but the CVS folder, hopefully no one's using CVS anymore. But if you have any kind of version control uh, within your plugin, uh, just get rid of that folder before you create the zip or, or move it temporarily. Uh, you submit the plugin for review, which I'll show you in a sec. And uh, then you push your code up using uh, the SVN repo, which I'll go through. You don't have to use SVN if, if you've ever used it before. It's, uh, I, I much prefer Git, and, and most people use Git for development. But uh, there are a couple of commands that you just need to run to, uh, to do an update. So before you actually push up to submit, you definitely want to test uh, with WP debug on. So WP debug is a little configuration uh, thing you can have in, uh, on your site or your local site. And you turn that on and any warnings uh, that show up uh, or that happen within your plugin or any other code will appear at the top. So definitely before you submit, it's good to uh, turn that on at least for a bit and then make sure that there are no warnings or errors and, uh, and if there are, fix them before you submit. Uh, if you're using JavaScript, you know, just check the console, uh, you know, the, the uh, debug tools in Chrome or whatever browser to make sure there are no errors, or if there are, they're not being caused by your plugin. And you don't need to, because a, a huge fear that I, I hear when, you know, you're creating something for a client and then you're like, oh, I want to release it for, for public, but it's like, oh man, there's like, it's like 50,000 plugins out there. Like, I don't want to put it out there because like one of those plugins might conflict with my plugin and, and then everyone will hate me and you know, there'll be like thousands of support emails and this will be terrible. Um, but no, there's no, you don't need to test. Obviously you want to test with plugins that you kind of work with maybe. Um, or, you know, if your, your plugin is like an add-on to another plugin or a theme, you obviously want to test with that. But beyond that, um, you know, it's, it's really up to you. Like you don't have to support every plugin uh, working with your plugin and conflicting if you don't want to. Um, if there's a popular one that you want to support and there's an error with it, fine, but um, there's no reason why you have to, to support uh, every plugin and it's totally reasonable if someone says like, ah, oh, my, my plugin doesn't work with this page builder and like my 500 other plugins I have installed. You can just be like, sorry, <laughs> you know, try deactiv back up your site, try deactivating plugins and other plugins. Does mine work? Yep, cool, all right, well. You have to contact the other people. So yeah, don't let this stop you uh, releasing the plugin uh, for the fear of you might have a conflict with one of the many other plugins out there. So now one of the, the easy part is you just go to wordpress.org uh, slash plugin slash add. And there's a little form there. Um, it gives you a little notice as to how many plugins are still in the review queue uh, left or waiting to, uh, to be reviewed. If you don't already have a WordPress.org account, you just have to create one. Um, it's free. And um, when you're creating that account, you, it, you know, it's associated with an email address. You need to make sure you don't have any of those like vacation messages ever turned on. And the reason for this is that they, the team, if there's some issue or, or you know, like sometimes uh, it could take a day or so for like your plugin update to appear for uh, people to be able to download and stuff like that. If they send out an email to all the plugin owners and then they get back a thousand, uh, you know, uh, I'm on vacation until next week <laughs> messages, that creates a ticket within their system that they then have to go into, close, you know, delete, whatever. Um, so yeah, if they're nice, they'll give you a warning, <laughs> but usually like it's very clear in the, in the uh, guidelines to not have it. Um, so, and the, but usually they'll just take your plugin down. So 
Um, uh, yeah, definitely just make sure that's never turned on from the email address you use for WordPress.org. But the form's very simple. So you just have a plugin name here, uh, description. You can just paste that in from your uh, readme.txt file. And then the plugin URL, so you have to have it like somewhere on the internet. You don't upload it here. Uh, but you could just, on a WordPress site, just drag the zip file into your media library, and then you'll get a URL on your website you can paste in there, and they can uh, download it and check out your plugin. So your plugin name, so if you look uh, back here, right, you've got the plugin name thing. That'll be turned into a slug. So that'll be turned into, you know, say your, pl your dash plugin dash name. You can change your plugin name later, but this slug cannot be changed. Um, so just you know, be aware of that and pick something that uh, you're happy with, I guess, <laughs> uh, and name your uh, plugin. Probably like a kind of a shorter one as well, which kind of gives your, your plugin somewhere to go <laughs> if you kind of want to add new features and change its direction a bit. If you're super specific as to like what your plugin does exactly, um, and it only that one feature, then you don't really have much, uh, much room to move, I guess. So yeah, keep it as general as you can. But once you submit it, you wait an indefinite amount of time. <laughs> uh, there's no, they're volunteers again, so there's no uh, set time as to when it'll, it'll be done. Um, but uh, yeah, they're usually pretty quick uh, to, to get you your uh, plugin ready. So once you get it, you get this SVN repository. And so it'll be your plugin name uh, at the end there. And there's just a couple commands you have to run to get your plugin released. So you run this CO for checkout and the URL that you get in the email and a folder name. So just telling SVN where to put it once, uh, uh, you know, so that'll create a folder on your computer where it'll be. And in this folder, it'll just have a, it'll have other folders, but it'll also have a trunk uh, folder, which is where you copy in your plugin code. So your main plugin file, any things that are being included, your readme.txt, all that. And then you literally just type SVN add trunk, which will add all those files to SVN. And I forgot to mention at the beginning, these slides will be available. <laughs> so you don't need to frantically uh, write anything. And uh, that'll just be for reference, because I often forget these commands <laughs> when I'm uh, doing it. And we'll review back to my slides and content to <laughs> remember how to do it when an update comes up. And then once you're there, you just type SVN CI, just like for commit. I guess CO was uh, already taken for checkout. And then dash M and a message, which you can just put like first version of my plugin. Once you're there, um, now you can actually go back to uh, WordPress.org slash plugin slash your name there. And uh, it'll be, you should see it there within a few minutes. Again, it can take a while if, there, if it's bogged down a bit. But uh, at that point, your plugin's released. So now someone can actually, you can tell anyone in the world and just say, hey, go to your WordPress site, go to plugins, add new, search for my plugin, and uh, it'll be there. And just click download, install, activate. And that's it. So now uh, we've added it. But like I said before, like one of the things you can add to the readme is uh, screenshots or descriptions of screenshots. So I mean, you've seen it when you search for a plugin, right? There's a little square image. So there's that icon image that's good to add. Um, when you actually go to wordpress.org uh, slash a plugin, uh, there's a kind of a big header image at the top, and then also screenshots. So all these files, there's this other folder that you see when you get your SVN uh, repository that's just an assets folder. So uh, before you used to actually put the screenshots and stuff inside your plugin, but that's kind of a waste, right? Because why would, why do you need to download all these screenshots and header images and icons when you just want to download the plugin code, right? Um, so now it's in a separate folder, which is good. So if you've got a couple screenshots like that, you just name them like screenshot-1, dash dash-2, dash-3, however many you got. Um, there is there's some rules if you like are switching up between PNG and JPEG, and uh, I think it supports GIF. Um, but yeah, I just tend to keep them all one format. And then in your readme, you can have uh, you know screenshot section, and then one description of the screenshot, to description of the screenshot, and that just adds as a caption on the page. So you do same thing, SVN add assets, just like we added it for drunk, and then commit it and just say adding screenshots. And that'll push that up, and then after a few minutes, it'll show up on the, on the website. 
So now you've got your initial plugin out, but now how do you, you know, release a new version? You're probably going to want to add features over time when people ask for it, or uh, you find a bug or something. So how do you actually get a new version out there? So you make the changes to your code uh, in that trunk folder. You uh, update your version number in your README and uh, in the plugin header, right? The standard uh, plugin header that you need at the top of the main PHP file. So just make sure to update in both. I often forget <laughs> to do one or the other. Um, but if you don't, it, yeah, it'll, it'll just show the wrong version or not show as an update at all. And then you add a line. Again, I often forget this. And there's, this is one guy on one of my plugins that'll always remind me, hey, you forgot to add the thing to your change log. I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I swear it's not a breaking change. You can update it. It's OK. Um, but yeah, definitely add a line there. And that just tells people which who are you know, good about updating their site. They can click and say, what's new? And then actually see what's changed in your plugin. And then you just do SVN add whatever files have changed, uh, or ones that you've added as well. And then just SVN CI uh, to uh, and a message saying, you know, maybe just a short one uh, of what uh, what change maybe or that you're just releasing uh, this version. So when so this is good, like we're releasing it on on the trunk folder, but it's nice to keep the versions organized kind of in separate folders. And that's what's called kind of tagging your your version of your plugin. So you just go back up. For, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, right? Like you've got like 1.0, and then if it's, and then you can go up to three. I think is, I think the events calendar of a monitor goes like to four. Right? So you know, like 1.2, point 10, point you know five. Um, but yeah, t typically three is good. So you do like 1.1.1 uh, 1 .1 would be like a minor change, like no real update. If you go from say 1.1 to 1.2, then that's again not a not a breaking change, but you're probably adding a new feature. It's not like a bug fix. Um, and then if you're going from say 1.5 to 2.0, that's like a major version change that could potentially. I mean, nobody, no, and people just update and not realize. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's the change where yeah, everyone's going to have to update everything they've ever done. Yeah, it's potentially. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and, and sorry to repeat the question. So, is, was, is there a good uh, thing for version numbers? Um, but yeah, no. But even like uh, it was easy digital downloads recently. Uh, three point five to three point six is actually a very major change that if you didn't know it and didn't update the database, would break like licensing and stuff. So, um, yeah. But that's typically yeah. You want to keep the major version for potentially breaking changes and then minor otherwise. So. Yeah, no problem. Um, so to tag those versions, yeah, you just go up one, and then you use SVN to actually just copy it from the trunk to your tags folder uh, with the version number of your new plugin. And then you just say from that main folder, hey, I'm, I'm tagging version 1.1. Uh, and that just makes it easy for people to like go back, keeps your code organized. Um, and when you release an update, um, you can actually release it in, in uh, trunk and then tag it afterwards. Like it's two separate steps. Um, yeah, just keeps your code organized. Yep. Yeah, I found this to always cause me problems. Oh, so tagging cause problems? Yeah. Issue, like I use SVM a lot, but if you make any change, you want to increase the lowest level version number usually. Right. And that means you're going to create a new tag. And almost always, that means you're going to have to update your meeting. Mm -hmm. And then when you release the meeting, you've got to create a new tag. <laughs> uh, not necessarily. No, there is a. No, oh, yeah. So you can definitely release uh, a README without, but you have to. So the question, yeah. Well, the comment was that sometimes you have to do a new version for a README file change. Um, but you can actually copy. You have to update the README file in the trunk, and then also copy it to the current tag as well. And then, and just copy it to both. Yeah, I did experiment with this at WordCamp US a couple times, and then I'm just like, oh, I can just update in the trunk. No, no. Yeah, and they also have to update in the tag uh, as well to update. WordPress.org. But yeah, you, you can do it uh, without releasing a new version, which is nice. But yeah, bit of a pain. <clears throat> so yeah, so now we've we started with this. And now after our tags, we're going to have our tags folder 1.1, 1.2, and so on as you release new versions. So they'll just be there, nicely organized. Um, so I mean, as we mentioned, like you do need to increase the version number uh, for every release. Otherwise, it won't show up as an update for people, right? Um, and you don't want like some people with version 1.2 with 
some of code that other people who downloaded 1.2 earlier <laughs> don't have. So anytime you have any change to your code, uh, add a, a increase the version number. It could just be yeah, version 1.2.1 if it's just like a small change, but make it a new version number and increase the number so um, they see it. So yeah, while you ultimately need to use SVN, um, if you're like me, like most people like to use Git and not SVN, so um, there is a way to kind of pull these changes to your trunk folder from Git. So you have your, your repository here with the trunk folder, and then I actually will kind of delete the trunk folder and then check out my Git repository into trunk. And then so you get this .git folder, which you don't SVN add um, that, that folder, but it's just there. And then you're able to just go in the trunk and do git pull to get your latest changes. And you can develop using git somewhere else, you know, using your local environment or in production. I mean, whatever you do for developing your plugin. <laughs> but this, uh, this tutorial kind of goes through uh, the specifics on how to set that up so you don't have to use SVN for everything. Um, and on that note, uh, don't actually use SVN for your development repo. So you could um, use trunk, uh, make some changes, not increase the version number, and if you've tagged it properly, it shouldn't release a new version. But every time you do that, the server will actually go through all your tags, your code, regenerate the zip file every time you push like a change. So if you're using it just to like, as you're developing, push it up and like not release it or anything, um, it does put a lot of strain on that server. And if you do it enough, they'll probably notice it and tell you to stop. <laughs> so uh, you really only want to use this SVN repo when you have a new version ready. Um, and use something else if you need to track it on the way. So tips on your plugin code itself. So don't include, um, you know, while you could do it for a client site because you're in full control over that site, if it's a plugin that you're um, using uh, or releasing for someone else you, or for everyone to use, you don't want to add like any styling and scripts everywhere across the entire front end and back end of the site. Um, you want to actually limit it to just say your admin settings screen, right? If you've got a nice UI there and you need some styling, just have it on that one page and that's it. Um, and I've got this, this free course here that just goes through like some specifics of ways that you can detect what page you're on and um, how you can, uh, again, not do this. Because <laughs> this is a big way to break everyone's uh, site where you're just adding script where it doesn't need to be. And then I uh, don't, I haven't, I don't see this as much now, but this was the number one uh, thing that plugins would do that would break other plugins or the theme or the site completely is basically there's a way you can like deregister, rip out the WordPress version of jQuery or any of the other scripts that WordPress includes and then add your own. Cause you're like, well, I need version whatever. So, and WordPress doesn't have that yet. So I'm just going to rip it out and put it in my own. But that is number one, <laughs> the way that you will break because people, when they build plugins the right way, they will expect that the version of, you know, if WordPress is uh, 4.9, it'll be jQuery version, whatever. So you don't want to um, rip out and put your own version of any included WordPress scripts, um, because again, it'll, it'll break stuff. So yeah, don't do that. But do include uh, PHP and or WordPress version check. So there's some people who are on very old hosts, uh, very old sites, and you don't want to um, have your, if your code, you know, is using some newer features of PHP, you don't want to break their sites with your plugin installed. So um, there's a library down here. <laughs> Again, I'll have these slides because it's kind of hard to, you, you'll, I can't pronounce that. Um, it's just a little, little snippet uh, that I've used on my plugins that just says, oh, is this at least WordPress 4.1? And is it at least uh, PHP 5.3 is uh, my plugins right now? Yes, cool. All right, run it. If not, it'll immediately deactivate your plugin and show a message saying, hey, your stuff's too old, uh, you need to upgrade. So, uh, do you use apply filters and do action? So if you've ever kind of used, you might have written a plugin that like uses a filter or an action that the theme or another plugin uses, but by using these functions, you're able to allow people to extend your plugin without having to hack your plugin. So use it where it makes sense um, so that other people can uh, you know, add on to your plugin without having to edit that code, um, which is nice. Uh, do, you don't have to translate it, 
But by using this kind of double underscore function, and there's a few other plugins as well. Actually, I've got, I did a, a presentation on um, more tips and, and ways to make your plugin translatable. But by using this function, it allows people to be able to go in and add translations for your plugin without you doing anything. Like I think my one plugin has been in Japanese, uh, Portuguese, Brazil. Like I don't even know who did it. <laughs> you know, they, they're just able to go in to translate.wordpress.org, uh, find their language, see the string that you have in your plugin, and then add the translation. And then someone else comes in, approves it, and then you're all set. So um, it's nice, just a nice thing to do uh, and get into the habit of using this function around any strings you have in your plugin. And uh, do add a little help page. So uh, for example, I've got this shortcode plugin for the events calendar. So thanks to the magic of WordPress, I can add a little menu item underneath uh, the main events uh, one, and then shows us beautifully designed. Um, it's a joke, this is terrible design. <laughs> um, but at least it's helpful, like it shows Here's the basic usage, link to a video, uh, here's some options, here's some examples. And this dramatically decreases uh, the amount of support that you need to deal with because it just makes it helpful and people can see uh, what your plugin does and how to use it without having to forage for it on the internet. Uh, so do test, test, test. But again, don't, don't let this be like how I mentioned before where you don't have to like test with every single plugin. Um, you know, you just be available. You know, if someone has an issue or you release a, a new version of your plugin, you know, don't, don't be like um, some people I know who, who may have, you know, released a new version, not added a required file, and then gone to a concert without cell reception when, you know, the plugin didn't have that file and it broke. Um, Breaking Benjamin is a great band, by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely be available and maybe hang around for an hour or two after you release the plugin, uh, new version. Um, just you know. But uh, one big example I gave, like Jetpack uh, 4.0, I broke millions of sites, um, and then 4.0.1 still broke all the sites. But then finally, 4.0.2 fixed that. Um, so you know, that's that's a big plugin uh, that, that can still have issues. So. Um, don't, again, don't, don't let it be like a fear that you might break a site, just, you know, be available, fix it, people will update it and move on with their lives, it's fine. So now you've got your plugin out there, how do you get more people using it? Kind of important. Um, so don't underestimate the power of word of mouth and social, because now that your plugin's on WordPress.org, again, you don't have to like tell them go to this website, download the zip, you know, take the zip, I swear it doesn't have a virus, upload it to plugins add new. Um, you can just literally say, go to plugins add new, type in your plugin name, you know, uh, and install it very quickly. So um, it's a great way to, and obviously social as well, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, uh, just mentioning it, that you have it, and get some initial users and some initial feedback. Uh, YouTube how-to videos I found are huge. These don't need to be super high tech. You can use your uh, headset, you know, the, the, what, the, the earbud um, headset with the inline mic. Um, if, if you don't have a, an, another mic, uh, maybe borrow one if you need to, but literally it's a quick little screencast. Uh, you know, there's free tools out there uh, showing how your plugin uh, helps them solve whatever plugin your problem solves. And um, YouTube especially, like you get a lot more kind of traffic because it is, you know, obviously harder to make a video, uh, but it's a great way to, uh, to get people to see your plugin without even having to install it first and then get it out there. Uh, frequent updates is a good thing. Um, there's a whole blog on, you know, because it's, it's kind of open source or it is open source as to how your plugin is ranked, you know, and how people actually find it. And you can, you can see all that and you're like, oh, well, if I create a account name with my keyword in it, then that'll help my rankings. But then they'll see that you're trying to game the system and delete your plugin. Um, so, and they, they say on, on this blog post not to do it. But one thing is frequent updates. And frequent updates doesn't need to be like every week. I think it's every, if you don't update it every six months, you get a penalty. Um, but still, yeah, just having at least once every few months uh, some update will help uh, your your thing uh, show up, but uh, it is hard. Uh, you know, it's uh, hard to get a lot of traffic. I mean, if my right meow plugin, uh, which will translate all the instances of now with meow, still has fewer than ten installs, <laughs> like I, I don't understand. Like, if if I can't get this plugin to the million level, like I get it. It is a very hard thing to do, but um, it is fully compatible with my other plugins. In case you were wondering. <laughs> 
But, uh, but yeah, older plugins are definitely favored over newer ones. So it can be hard uh, to, you know, don't expect to just put it on WordPress.org and you'll get millions of users without any kind of marketing or telling anyone about it. Those days are kind of gone, but um, it's definitely worth it. You know, like it takes time, but nothing beats being able to tell a friend, family member, a potential spouse that they can go to plugins that new. <laughs> like, oh, you have a plugin on the repo? Wow. Um, and they can find it. So it's good. Um, so again, uh, my plugins are there. Uh, of course, teach people how to help uh, people do this stuff. Uh, plugins for beginners would actually a course on, on uh, learning how to code plugins. Uh, learning center, and then yeah, I did. I had the slide uh, when I did this before. It's like WordCamp Hamilton is coming up soon, but it's right now. So yeah. Um, and speaking of, you can get the slides right there, just on brianhog.com/wchamont2018. Uh, uh, but that's it. So I'm open to any uh, questions in the remaining time. You have ten minutes. <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> yes. yes. I've noticed that sometimes plugins that have been around a long time and are actually the best choice start to drop down mm -hmm. and are replaced by what are basically useless kinds. I'm just laughing because like my plugin actually ranked higher than the events calendar at one point when they when they first released the new version. I'm like, oh, that's great, but weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, what's causing that? I mean, yeah, you can you can read that that Freemius blog post, and it literally. So the question, or are we still recording? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah. So the question was, uh, yeah, like why why when you search even the exact plugin name does the wrong plugin or you know useless plugin come up? Um, yeah, I mean, there, the engine is definitely not perfect, and I've definitely seen weird stuff like that. But there is, like, yeah, that, that Freemius blog post does go through, like, exactly how that algorithm works. Um, and I, I do know they tweak it from time to time, but, yeah, I mean, having a unique plugin name helps. <laughs> but even then, it's, uh, it's not perfect, for sure, yeah, so. Yeah. How do you uh, tackle the support questions and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's another, yeah, so the answer, the question was, uh, how do you tackle the support questions that you get? Oftentimes, like, I mean, it takes effort to do a support question, right? So personally, I find it, you know, I've gotten some amazing feedback and, and uh, feature ideas and everything else, because, like, literally, they have to create a WordPress account, they have to go on, they have to type it. So if they're going to put that much effort into it, like, chances are they either have a real problem that it's like, oh, shoot, like, it's not clear in the documentation, or, or maybe I can switch up the UI to, like, fix it. Or it's like, oh, yeah, that's a sweet idea that you, like, are struggling with and, like, hope that my plugin would solve, but it doesn't. Um, so personally, yeah, it's less of a, like, I guess, deal with thing and more of a, uh, opportunity. Oh, but it's on that subject, make sure, I don't think it does that automatically, uh, to subscribe to your su uh, plugin support thread um, so that anytime you get a support question, you get an email for it uh, and is don't have automatic? to. Is it automatic? Yeah. The, the couple of years ago, it wasn't. And uh, yeah, I would, I would then knock at emails and <laughs> be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't see your thing. Um, but no, yeah, I just try to be helpful and just Think of it as you know, so it's another human like me who's trying to get their work done and uh, and do it. But yeah, it's been it's been great support uh, uh, to do it. But yeah, if I keep getting the same question over and over again, then it's like, all right, I should add add some documentation, FAQ, whatever, yeah. <laughs> make it better. <laughs> Any other uh, questions? <clears throat> great. Well, thanks for coming out and enjoy uh, the rest of your workout. <clears throat>